We all know and love Mediterranean cuisine like shawarma and falafel, but we all get a little homesick sometimes. Luckily, there's a place in central Tel Aviv where we can indulge in American-style cuisine. For a pretty simple bakery with a diverse menu, Nola American Bakery has just what you're looking for if you're craving some New Orleans-style cuisine. We're now here in the heart of Tel Aviv at an American-inspired bakery called Nola. So where did Nola, where did the name come from? Nola is, stands for New Orleans, Louisiana. It's where I was born, oh. yes. I'm originally from New Orleans. Well, my mom's American and my dad's Israeli, so we made Aliyah slash came back. What inspired you to open up a bakery here in the heart of Tel Aviv? Um, I guess it's a combination of missing American pastries that when I opened there was nothing, no one was making American pastries. Um, yeah, there are tons of Americans living in Tel Aviv, so it's nice to have a place here that makes you feel like home. Yeah, there are a lot of people who come here mm -hmm. to feel a piece of home, and my staff uh, laughs at me that I'm like Bet Chabad for the <laughs> Americans. So besides for the bakery, you also offer a full restaurant menu as well? Yeah, we have like a cafe menu. Everything's American style, so it's American style breakfast, um, a few salads, sandwiches. Cafe menu kind of came in as the idea evolved, but definitely the pastries are at the heart of the business. We have American oldies music playing all the time, and uh, we try to like celebrate American seasonal things as well as holidays. Tadia's bakery has definitely gained a reputation since its opening with her Southern Comfort family recipes. This is the Build-A-Biscuit, which is a buttermilk biscuit that you can build your own sandwich. So this is uh, cheddar cheese and grilled tomatoes. Wow. But it can go anything from cream cheese, salmon, bacon, Nutella, and peanut butter. We're now here by the delicious pastries. I see some that you don't see a lot of in Israel, like bagels and Rice Krispie treats. Yeah, and so we have Real American bagels. I got a recipe from some guy in New York who gave me his actual recipe and we boil them and everything and I like to believe they're real bagels. Um, well, I guess we'll have to try them to find out. American baking is based on simple flavors, so you can't go wrong with the Southern classics. Southern touch with the buttermilk biscuits that are more a Southern kind of thing. They're always Blueberry muffins, of course, and another kind of sweet and savory muffin. We have brownies and blondies and lemon bars and big, real American cookies, chocolate chip cookies that are chewy on the inside and crispy on the outside. This looks like a pretty cake that would catch people's attention. Yeah, this is cookie cake, which we all know as Americans, but here, it's not done. Another one of those things that my mom used to make it for our birthdays, but they don't sell it here. Come holiday season, where Americans are longing for a taste of home, Talia's delicious holiday-themed treats are just what you need. Here we have marshmallows that are drying now. Another kind of seasonal thing, we did a peppermint marshmallows that we're gonna serve with hot chocolate. So the peppermint hot chocolate, which is kind of like an American winter Christmassy thing. And what's New Orleans-inspired cuisine without a cocktail menu? Since cocktails were created in New Orleans, yeah. so like this is a typical New Orleans cocktail, it's called Hurricane. Mm. Let's try it. It's a little sour, a little sweet. What's inside? Southern Comfort, orange juice, amarena juice, and pineapple juice, and it's a lot, a lot of different things in there. Now it's time to eat and see if this bagel really lives up to its expectations. Well, this is exactly what I would eat back at home in New York. A bagel, sesame bagel with lox and cream cheese. Freshly baked bagel. Let's try it. That's a bagel. Maybe get a, a poppy seed bagel. They have poppy seed bagels, they have everything bagels, they have sesame bagels, plain bagels, whatever your heart desires. Now we're gonna head to the kitchen and see how it's all done. The cookies, the cupcakes, and my personal favorite, the Rice Krispie treats. Let's go. The pastry chefs were frosting, glazing, and sprinkling the donuts and cookies. 
You can't go wrong with any of the choices at Nala Bakery, so why not have a taste of America here in Israel? Hi everyone and welcome back to Chef Didi Mazri's kitchen where he's going to teach us yet another delicious recipe. What do you have for us today? So today we're going to make tuna shawarma from fresh tuna mm -hmm. and we're going to lay it over on the chapati that we're going to make here from scratch and uh, with beetroot tina. Where do we start? So we're going to start with the beetroot because it needs to cook in the oven for about like an, an hour. Okay. So this is our beetroot. We're gonna take one fresh beetroot, washed. We're gonna put it in an aluminum foil and we're gonna close it almost to the top. Okay, and when I have this left, this opening left, we're gonna take the olive oil. I'm gonna put just a little bit on it. Okay, and this will help us peel the beetroot after. So after we put in the beetroot into the oven, what is the next step? So. Basically, our next step is to take this fresh tuna cut, yes. cut it into wide strips, and uh, put it. We're gonna put it in our mix of uh, spices, especially for this. Let's do it. Okay, so this is very hot right now, but this is the best point of time to peel the beetroot because it will peel the easiest when it's hot. Because you see all the fumes coming out of it. That's they're separating the the outside of the beetroot from the inside. Mm, I love beets. Smell amazing. We already put one cup of a uh, half cup of tina here um, with a beetroot the size of a small fist. Okay. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut it into not too small pieces, but just to help us uh, grind it with a, with a hand blender. Yeah, so you throw it into the bowl, the beets with the tina, and then we blend it with the hand blender. Exactly, great. So we made this beautiful pink beetroot and tina dressing or sauce. Yeah. And where do we go from there? So right now we're gonna make the chapati to put them out, to put on the bottom, and on top of the chapati we'll put the tahini beetroot and then the the tuna shawarma. So we're gonna use brown flour because that's for me personally and only personally me um, the closest to I can, that I can get to an original Indian chapati. Okay. taste. So took a one cup of a brown flour. We need half a cup of water. I put a little bit extra here just in case I need. So I'm not gonna pour the whole cup. And I'm gonna put a little bit of salt, let's say like a half a teaspoon of salt just to taste. Okay for me I'm gonna start with a fork and I'm gonna mix it is actually the, the part that I love the most. Yeah, getting your hands dirty. Yeah, touching food with your hands is always amazing. So after we did the chapati, what we're gonna do is gonna take our tuna. And this part, as you can see, is the bloody part of the tuna. We don't eat that part. So I'm gonna start with cutting it off. Then I'm gonna cut the tuna into stripes. Strips like this. Okay. My spice mix is paprika, cumin, garlic, and hell, which is, uh, in English, it's cardamom. In the meantime, I'm going to spread the scallions on the on the open part of the of the pan. What we're waiting with the scallions is for them to just get a little bit softer. So we seared the chapati, we seared the tuna, we have the onions. What is the next move? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna start with the chapati on the plate. Okay. We're gonna start with the, on the bottom of it, we're gonna put our beetroot tina. What I'm doing is I'm putting a spoon in the middle and I'm gonna open it up a little bit. Yeah. 
kind of like you do with hummus. Yeah, exactly like you do with hummus. But what you do want to have here, give it to me for yes. a second, you want to have edges. Oh, you the want edges, the edges to be filled. The edges will keep the, Got it. the ingredients. You want the middle to have the least amount of a tahini and the edges to have the most. Perfect. Good. After that, we're gonna fix the onion that we grilled on the inside, okay? So we're gonna do maybe two of those. Okay. Okay, basically now what we're gonna do is just take the tuna loins and we're gonna slice them. Another way we can do is just put cloves on and, and crumble them on top of it. Okay, so on this I'm gonna put a little bit of fresh uh, olive oil just to make it a little bit even moister. Then stay in there. Wow, this does look like a shawarma is usually a meal that is made with chicken. So this actually kind of looks like chicken when you look at it. Yes, we're gonna try it. Let me take this one out. Okay. Yeah, so the onion you have to break through it. <laughs> Wow. With Tel Aviv being such a diverse city and people coming from all over the world, it's no surprise that we stumbled upon a restaurant that combines Eastern and Western cuisine. Immigrants from all around the world have been making their way to the Holy Land for quite some time, bringing with them a wide array of traditional recipes, many of which have been modified to suit regional tastes. These dishes have evolved to make Israeli cuisine what it is today, and Gadara 26 is a reflection of that tradition. From the moment you enter the restaurant, you notice the open kitchen, brick walls, and wooden floors giving it a rustic vibe. We're sitting now here with the chef and owner of the restaurant. So why don't you tell us about the food here? What's the, what's the style? What is it inspired from? Well, uh, it's, it's like a market restaurant. Uh, I look for a place near the market so I can go around and uh, pick all the fresh vegetables mm -hmm. and uh, every season to take whatever uh, ingredients I want to use. So all your produce is from there? All my product is from the shuk every day. I go around, I see what's new, what's fresh, what's different. I pick it by myself, we bring it here, and uh, we have a everyday changing menus. Like many Israelis, Amir came from diverse roots, and it's reflected in his menu. I'm uh, half Swedish and half Iraqi. So uh, it was two called, different worlds. It's two different worlds. Uh, so this restaurant, you know, Israel is probably the, the line between these two Western and Eastern cultures. Yeah. So uh, I would go for the most. Uh, it's my Iraqi beetroot kube and my Swedish meatballs. The food isn't the only thing that makes Gadara unique. The decor reflects the history of Shuka Carmel. I love the interior design of the restaurant. Gives it like a rustic feel. Yeah, we try to make it as, as homey and cozy as we could. It's, uh, you know, a little bit eclectic. We picked a little bit from there, a little bit from here. And uh, my wife uh, made it really just so it can be cozy. And, uh, it matches the neighborhood, the style exactly. of the neighborhood. It matches the neighborhood, looks a little bit like our own house, yeah. and it's very comfortable to sit here. You can come here in flip flops, you can come here with a suit and a tie, and you'll still feel very yeah. comfortable in it. Okay, so why don't we head to the kitchen now, whip up something for us, and we can try it. Yeah, sure, let's try the Swedish meatballs. Showcasing unique Israeli cuisine from different parts of the world is the objective at Gadara 26. I'm making actually the Swedish meatballs. It's uh, just fried uh, ground beef mm -hmm. that I add uh, some uh, beef stock with the cream of the mashed potato and cranberry jam. That cool. is the... So you're mixing sweet it's sweet, and savory, salty. a little bit creamy, salty, exactly. This is a dish I knew that the Israeli people would love. I grew up on it and it's like the Swedish falafel. Now I add the sauce, which is this beef stock and cream. We're gonna let it finish up. Some salt, pepper, cover it up. 
let that cook for another five minutes and we're ready. Watching him plate the food has made me eager to give it a try. Some cranberry jam. Ooh, yummy. Thanks so much. Let's try this out. Ooh, look at that. Mmm, wow. It's a sweet meatball. <laughs> this is good stuff. I see one of your desserts is on the menu, yeah. mala beef. Yeah. It's my favorite dessert. Yeah. Do you guys make it homemade from scratch? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll let you taste our mala beef right. and see what you think of it. Chef Amir then told us how to make the very popular dessert. Malabi has become one of the most beloved street food here in Israel. I make it with the cream, uh, corn flour, sugar, and uh, rose water. We'll have the rose water syrup. You can add whatever you want. I usually add just some uh, pomegranate and just some chopped pistachios. This is a very pretty plate. Mm. It's very creamy, sweet, a little sour because of the pomegranate. Very good. Max, you want to try some? For those of you who enjoy simple yet delicious food crafted from fresh ingredients, Gadara 26 is the place to eat. If you're looking for a kosher sushi spot here in Tel Aviv, we have found just the place. And it's not only kosher, it's also pregnant safe. Let's go check out what that entails. Ninihachi is seriously a one-of-a-kind restaurant. The Japanese-styled spot has been open for five years and has since been booming with business. Every day the restaurant is full and the kitchen is constantly working on getting deliveries out. Ninihachi caters to a wide range of different customers. If you're kosher but want good, high-quality sushi, this is the spot for you. Let's go upstairs and get to know more about the restaurant with the owner, Uji. Ninihachi is a Japanese restaurant. It's a kosher restaurant. Okay. Uh, one of a kind, I think, right. at least. <laughs> we serve Japanese food. We serve, of course, sushi that everyone knows. Right. We serve a lot of Japanese dishes. It's agarashi tofu. It's corn flour tofu deep fried with a very special uh, sauce with uh, wow. ginger and uh, radish. Ooh. And a bit of mirin sauce. Uh, yes. It's excellent. We serve tapenaki dishes. Tapenaki are hot plates. That, okay. uh, you cook the main dish on the plate with vegetable, with all the sauce. So everything uh, is seems, being cooked on the plate itself? On the plate itself, and we would serve it on the plate to so the table. So it kind of cooks as we're eating it yeah. as well? Yeah, and you hot. see it and you get it with a lot of steam uh, to the table, and it's Ooh, excellent. Yeah. that's delicious. Uh, we serve some uh, chicken, some beef filet. Uh, Noodles, stuff like that Yeah, have? a lot. Mm -hmm. We have a huge, huge, huge menu, about, uh, I think about 220 dishes with the sushi. Just in case you were concerned you wouldn't find anything on the menu, think again. This place has over 200 dishes to choose from, and that's not even the best part. When I first heard about you guys, I heard, first of all, that you're a kosher sushi restaurant, but second of all, that you're pregnancy safe. What exactly does that mean? Pregnant safe, as you see. It means that you cannot make the sushi in the same place that you uh, made any rolls with fresh fish before. Right. So what we decided, me and my partner, we decided that we need a place for women that are pregnant to eat sushi because we know that they are Such craving for that. Yeah. I heard that that's like one of the main cravings for pregnant women. It's like when you can't have it and you see it and that's all you want. They have to have it. <laughs> I get people and people. I get husbands. Yeah. Come here for much daughter, Sheva. Wow. Haifa, wow. uh, my wife sent me, uh, <laughs> give me this and that, and, uh, and I need to come back as yeah. fast as possible. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Belsheva and Haifa are not around the corner. Those are minimum of one hour drives to Tel Aviv just to get this pregnant safe sushi. The common uh, sense that uh, people think that they are not allowed to eat seaweed. Seaweed is not a problem. The right. problem is the raw fish. fish right. So what we decided, we make a special uh, pregnant safe uh, place. Uh, we use other, uh, other equipment. We use a different knife. We use uh, other gloves, okay. a, a cutting board. Right. Uh, the rice is different, so it doesn't have so any it touch. It touches anything that could potentially be harmful for pregnant women. Yeah, and uh, we use only cooked fish, fried fish, right. and vegetarian bowls. 
And so you guys are that one spot for pregnant for pregnant women that are looking for sushi. Yeah. You're the go-to. Uh, I can tell you that about I believe 15 percent of our customers daily are pregnant women or pregnant women husbands. <laughs> It's safe to say this restaurant has hit a huge market, and the husbands are paying the price. What's even more interesting than the concept of pregnant safe sushi is the meaning behind the name Nini Hachi. Speaking of unique, I know that your name is also very unique to your location itself. When we just opened, we started uh, thinking about the name. We have a lot of different names. At the end, we said, uh, let's think uh, we are at uh, Ben Yehuda 228. And uh, what does uh, 228 mean? And then we see that 2 is Ni, and uh, another 2 is another Ni, and uh, 8 is Hachi in Japanese. So we decided Ni Ni Hachi, it's a nice name, we wow. like it, so... That's creative. Yup, you'll never forget that one. Now you know the name, the location, and learned a little Japanese along the way. So while learning more about the place itself, we got to try a few of the top dishes here at Ni Ni Hachi. Oh, I'm so excited. Wow. So this was one of the hot plates. That That's a done. tapenaki dish. Uh, as you see, we have here uh, salmon, some mushroom, some peppers, zucchini with some sesame on it. Yes. That's an excellent uh, roll. It's a bit spicy. Okay. Uh, vegetarian. Spicy. Outside you have kolobabi, some uh, sherry tomatoes, uh, you have cucumber, you have chili, some peanuts on it. It's a sweet and sour sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, very light, very refreshing. Very yeah. refreshing. This just looks like a health plate right yeah. here. <laughs> There's a Thai dish that is called somtam. Okay. Somtam is like a Thai salad, a right. very common salad. Uh, so we made the dish uh, a sushi as a salad. So you get very inspired from all different types of dishes, but then make them into your own yeah. over here. That's a tuna and a yellowtail. Got it. Uh, that I've never tried. It's like this here tuna okay. uh, with some uh, scallions on it. Inside you have avocado and uh, regular tuna. Okay. From the sauce, it is a bit spicy sauce. Here we have um, inside yellowtail, avocado. This is a crunchy, crunchy Ooh, bit. Ooh, beets. There was one more thing Udi wanted to share with us about the restaurant that makes it even more unique than you could ever imagine. So before we dig in here and before I devour this, um, you also mentioned that you have more than just your pregnancy and kosher menu. You yeah. have more than that. Yeah. Uh, as we started to open the restaurant, me and my partner, we work in the Japanese restaurant about 15 years each. Oh, okay. So, uh, so you know the place, you get it. Yeah, we know the place. Uh, we, we understand how we, we need to make the product as best as possible. Uh, but we want it to be for as much more customers as we can. Right. Uh, first of all, we are kosher, so we are open to all kinds so of customers. Opens the yeah, right. the pregnant safe uh, for pregnant women. Uh, we have a gluten free menu. Um, the rice that we make, usually, uh, um, Japanese restaurants use. Uh, Rice vinegar. Right. We use plain vinegar and we make it, we add the sugar, we add the salt okay. and we make it by, by ourselves so you don't have any gluten in it. So it's gluten free, most of our sushi is gluten free, whatever, you don't have uh, uh, flakes or right. uh, tempura or stuff like that. And uh, we also have a vegan menu. Um, okay, so uh, this you've is a reached vegan dish. Every single market out there right now, like kosher in Israel, yeah. kosher, <laughs> let's put it that way, kosher, pregnant friendly, vegan and gluten-free. If you're a pregnant woman, <laughs> you don't eat gluten, <laughs> uh, you eat vegan uh, and Did you eat you? kosher. Wow, this is, this your, is, spot. is your place. This yeah, is your we are on the only place, I think. The salmon was amazing, perfectly cooked and deliciously seasoned. The kolorabi sushi tasted exactly how it looked, light, refreshing, and a little spicy. And for my first time eating yellowtail, I have to say it was out of this world. The crushed beets on top made the dish pop with all types of flavors. So we definitely can leave it at this. Ninihachi is the go-to spot for any of you sushi lovers who keep kosher, are vegan, eat gluten-free, and or are pregnant.